All right, guys, it's time for another 308 video. And I've been dragging my feet for a couple days because I was waiting for my new uh, scope base and rings to come in. Not a lot of options for the Savage. Uh, this is the Leupold one-piece base with their rings. So I went with that, hoping it's going to do a nice job. What I pulled off, if you didn't uh, see the last video, were some of the, uh, you know, the see-through, shoot-through, whatever uh, rings where you can see your open sights. They've done fine for years, but lowering this scope down with these is going to give me a much better cheek weld and hopefully allow me to shoot some better groups. So I went with these. The old mounts are still around if I decide to go back to them. That's always an option, man. That's always an option. So let's get this guy out of the way. So we, this is the third loading with our Starline brass. These have not been tumbled or cleaned since the last video where we shot the 110 grain uh, Hornady Z-Max. No need to clean them. I did wipe them down with a rag with some alcohol on it and they are ready for another firing. The bullet today. So last time we shot that 110 grain bullet. Today I want to go all the way on the other side of the spectrum and shoot the 202 grain ELD match. I'm sorry, 208 grain. Yeah, 208 grain ELD match from Hornady. This is the replacement for the A-Max. It's got this fancy new tip on it, but essentially I think it's pretty much the same. So it's their 208 grain match bullet. Looking forward to seeing how these are going to shoot. I've never shot anything this heavy in my Tika, and I definitely haven't shot anything this heavy in the Savage. So I don't know, we'll see. They may tumble and shoot terrible, but there's only one way to find out. I did do some measurements on my guns to see how how long we could load these before it hit the lands of the rifling. It was actually surprisingly long. Uh, with my Savage, I could load out to just over three inches. 3.003 or 3.004 was about where I was hitting the lands. And the Tika was a little bit more than that, it was around 3.028 to hit the lands. The problem is that is several hundred thousandths longer than magazine length in both of the guns. The Tika has a maximum magazine, you know, maximum length of about two, a little over 2.8, like 2.83 is about as long as I can load and fit in the magazine. And with the Savage, it's, it's, it's pretty much 2.8. If you uh, load them much longer than that, you can't get them down into the rotary magazine. So I've been trying to decide what to do here. Should I load them long and just load them one at a time? Or should I go ahead and load magazine length and see how they shoot? Eh, I kind of been going back and forth. I think what I'm going to do is go with magazine length. That's going to mean a couple hundred thousands to jump to the, to the rifling, but we'll see how they do. Primers. Last time with this brass, we shot CCI primers. This time I want to shoot Winchester WLRs. Just the standard Winchester large rifle primers. And for powder, I think I'm just going to go with Fargate. Hard to go wrong with that. And this combination is right in the Hornady manual. If I can find their 208 grain bullets here with uh, 308. Varget is one of their powders and they show a max charge of 40, 40 grains. So they shoot 34.9 up to 40 grains. I don't want to go overboard here, but I do kind of want to explore the, the top end of the range. So what I want to shoot is 38 up to 40 and we'll do half grain increments and that'll give us five loads. So 25 shots for each gun, you know, 25 for my Savage, 25 for my Tika, 38 up to 40 grains. We're going to shoot an overall length of 2.8. That's what the uh, that's what the manual suggests for an overall length is 2.800. So we'll just go with that. So we're just going to load strictly by the book, by the Hornady manual, and see what happens. So that's kind of the plan. I also want to neck size these rather than full length size them. The last two uh, resizings, once before the first firing and then once after the, the second firing, those were both full-length sizings on this, uh, on this Starline brass. 
but this time I want to try and neck size them. Hopefully we won't need to trim or anything. We just neck size them, give them a quick uh, chamfer and load them back up. So that's really kind of the plan here. Let's just go ahead and get started. So I've got my Redding neck sizing die in here right now, set up like, uh, like normal. I am going to use uh, Redding Imperial Dry Neck Lube. This is a uh, graphite powder sort of stuff or whatever. All you do is you take your round, dunk the neck down into this application media tap off the excess and then you get a little uh, just a little coating which makes it easy to neck size so there we go primer got popped out and we are sized I like to keep a paper towel or a rag around to just wipe off a little bit of the excess here and that is ready to rock okay sizing is all done and these really haven't stretched they're all right about two inches within a couple thousandths of two inches which is where we trimmed them in a previous video so no trimming what I do want to do with these guys now is uh, deburn chamfer the case mouth and also want to use a uh, primer pocket scraper just to clean up the primer pocket just a touch. Okay, that guy is ready for a primer. Okay, priming is going along well. Next step will be powder. I did test some of these in my uh, Savage, in the lever action, to make sure that the Next sized rounds, we're going to feed okay, and it seems like they are. I don't have a ton of experience neck sizing for a uh, for a lever action. But it seems like it's going to work okay. I'm in a beam scale sort of mood today. So that's what we're going to use. Perfect. So I just need to do this 50 times. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll do it 10 times. We'll get the uh, 38 grain charges weighed out. And then we'll seed a couple bullets. All right, these big guys, we're going to be seeding them almost all the way down to the bearing surface of the bullet. 2.8 is pretty darn short for these big honking bullets. So let's go ahead and set our seeding die. A little bit of crunchiness. Sounds like we're already uh, a little bit compressed.
Okay, 2.825 and drop it. 2.801. Let's seat, seat a couple of them here, see what they, see how consistent they are. Two point seven nine nine five, two point seven nine nine, two point eight zero one. Beautiful. Right there in the good. All right. That's what she looks like. Whole lot of bullet down under there. All right, so I just need to keep on seating these guys and weigh in charges. So not a whole lot exciting about that. So I will just see you guys out on the range about right now. All right guys, we are starting off with problems before we even get started. So the Savage, you know, I put new scope rings on it, so I needed to sight it in. So I came out here with some of my hunting ammo, my leftover hunting ammo from this year, and it shot fine, got it sighted in, and as soon as I switched over to the 208 grain, uh, they started keyholing. Yeah, I probably should have got a close up on. Yeah, just trust me. There's a big, nasty, gross keyhole there. And then I moved the target to 100 and shot a couple more just to be sure, and they completely missed the paper. So I don't even know what twist the Savage is. I'll find that out later once we get back to the bench. But I was afraid it might be a slow twist, and it's apparently a little bit too slow for these 208s. So. The Tika, on the other hand, I shot a couple through it to get it warmed up and tested. It is sighted in and it looks like it's gonna be shooting some decent groups. At least that's the hope. So let's get started. Only 25 rounds, so we'll be done in no time. I did bring out my larger magazine this time, so we will be feeding them from the magazine. Five shot group, left hand dot. My velocity wasn't too bad. I forgot to start my chronograph properly, but I did at least get the numbers. Looks like uh, 20, a little under 2,300 feet per second, which you can see right there on your screen, so I don't know why I'm telling you. It's like an extreme spread, a little over 50, so, eh. That's not great, but this next one here, which is 38.5 grains of Varget, I've got high hopes. No signs of pressure there on the brass. I did have a look. The cider shots that I loaded up were 39.0 grains and they didn't have any pressure signs. So these first couple groups here, I'm not terribly worried about the brass. I'll have to watch my barrel heat here. I am warming up a little bit. I might give it a few minutes here just to, uh, just to make sure that doesn't become a factor. Okay, 39.0. That one really flew out there. That felt like a good shot. Yeah, 
Yeah, that really sucks. I was hoping that, uh, I was hoping these groups were going to be a little bit better. Twenty-three seventy-two with a fifteen point two standard deviation. All right, next up thirty-nine point five. Okay, last up is 40 grains. All right, a little bit disappointed. So let's get back to the bench. Think this over a little bit. Okay, first of all, let me see if I can get you guys a view, a better view. Man, that's too bright. Stand by. Okay, let's try that. Th this was the worst shot of them all. Let's see if I can flatten it out a bit. Yeah, that baby was flying sideways. This was at 50 yards out of the Savage. And that 50 yard group was like here and here and here. It was huge. And some of them ended up kind of going in kind of straight, straightening themselves out at uh, 50 yards there. But yeah, they were, they were going all over the place. The Tika, on the other hand, these groups, uh, not great, but not bad. That first one was just over an inch right about an MOA, and it just kind of got worse from there. So the lighter end was definitely better. Kind of unfortunate. I was hoping this was going to shoot some really tight groups. But, okay, so, of course, after this, the Savage not even working well. Should I brighten up the screen again? Stand by. Okay, there we go. What was I saying? Oh, so I get back in and when I was cleaning it, you might see my cleaning rod here has got tape on it and I've been making marks and stuff. So I measured the twist in both of my guns before I even looked it up. And I came out with uh, one in 12 for the Savage. And from what I'm looking up on the internet, that seems to be accurate. So the Savage is a 1 in 12 twist, and it even says, like right here on this here box of bullets, twist rate 1 in 10. So 1 in 12, not a big surprise that the uh, that the Savage wasn't able to stabilize them. The Tika, on the other hand, is a 1 in 11. I mean, it's it sh shouldn't strictly be able to stabilize these bullets, but, you know, it clearly was. They were flying straight. They just didn't really group all that well here on the higher end, but no wonky bullet holes or, or anything that, you know, makes me suspect that there were stabilization problems. Regardless, I think this will be the heaviest bullet we test here in this little string of tests we've got going on. I, I was a little bit surprised about velocity. So I went back into the manual and had a look. The hot, the 40 grains of Varget our highest charge here, we got 2,416 feet per second out of it. And the book was uh, telling us we should get 2,300. So we were about 100 feet per second faster than what the book had to say for itself, but didn't see any problems, didn't see any uh, pressure issues on the brass or anything like that. So, yep, I think we were... Just really on that top edge, this might be just a touch too heavy for the Tika, but it was worth a shot, and they didn't do bad. They definitely didn't do bad. The, the next bullet I think we're going to test here in this little series is the 145 grain 
Lehigh Defense Controlled Chaos. One of those pretty brass looking Lehigh Defense bullets. That thing ought to kick some butt. So I'm thinking this is the way we'll go next. I haven't really had very good luck getting it, getting copper solid or I guess this is probably closer to brass than it is to copper, but these solid bullets, getting them to group really, really well. They generally shoot okay. So I'm just, I'm gonna go into this next video, keeping my expectations in check. But we'll see. All right, I think that's it for this one. And I will see you guys next time.